Welcome to the Low Car Car Show. I'm Sam Badabi, coming to you this week from the Grand National F100 Show in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Welcome to the Low Car Car Show. This is gonna be one awesome car. And I said, it doesn't even run yet. <laughs> and look at it now, it's amazing. I'm here with Jay and his 51 F1 that he drove all the way down with, from Montana with Tina in the hot tub. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> How'd the AC work? The AC, it moves a lot of air. Yep. It works good. The matting, I think, is rotted out in it. So it, I tried it, it just spits water on me. So we just stick with the air part. So these things actually had water in them yes, as sir. well. Fill it up with water, it's like a swamp cooler. Yeah, like a swamp cooler yep. like you have today. Exactly, wow. like a swamp cooler. You pull your little string to get that matting wet. Yep. And then just the air going through there. Man. Supposed to be cool air. That is so <laughs> cool. What a great design. Yeah. Oh, it, you drove it all the way from Montana, from Montana with the trailer behind with, you. With the trailer, 2,350 miles. Now, how long have you been taking the trailer around with you with Tina? The trailer is more or less from my Roadster that I have. Yep. So it's, it's been on the road for 25 years. 25 at least. years? I couldn't it imagine is. driving down the road, seeing you come by. She's gotten me pulled over one time. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done to it the to make it where you can drive it cross country 2,300 miles. Well, we put a Velari front end underneath it. We're running a four bar suspension in the back with the Velari rear end, and we're running a C4 automatic. It's what not, engine? Engine is the Merc flathead. Really? It was a flathead that was in this truck when I found it, not knowing it. I, it probably got changed up because it is a Merc flathead. Right, right. Just had it rebuilt. This is the original flatbed for this year truck. I shortened it up 10 inches and added wheel wells because I lowered it but this is the design that the wood stake pockets had on it when yeah. I found it. Terry, you know, when I take a look at that console and I see the attention to detail and the hours that it went to make that as gorgeous as it is, suspended in the air with electronics going through it and you don't see a single wire, tells me the quality of the rest of the build on this truck. Oh, thank you. So tell yes. me what this started off as. This started as a 54 F100 panel truck. I've always loved the panel truck, but I've been in F100 since high school, and so it seems like uh, they just don't get the attention. And I, I had this about 15 years ago. I thought, you know, if I could take some, I could take one of these panel trucks and kind of make it sexy. Yes. You know, just to see if I could do it. You well, know, you just, did it. This thing is beautiful. And you did this all yourself. You taught yourself along the way, like for instance, telling me you got a TIG welder to do that front bumper and to do those grill accents. Get a sewing machine and to do the interior as beautiful as that interior is. Yeah. How many hides did it take for you to do the interior? 12 full hides, and by the time I got the good part out of all of them, I pretty much used it all. That is beautiful. This top, you said this top actually unbolts and it's made of aluminum? It's made of a, yeah, the, the heart of it's aluminum so it's lightweight. So, right. uh, you know, so you can take it off and run it as a roadster truck. And you kept the wife happy the whole time doing it, right? That's the key. Oh uh, yeah, she's, I had my first F100 in high school and she, she met me when I, when I had my first truck and she knows that's my passion. Here are a couple of 61 through 66 model trucks, nicknamed Slicks, and that's due to their flat sides. We'll be right back with more of the Low Car Car Show.
One of my favorite products that we've introduced in the past couple of years is our RestoMod series of pedals. We've got brake and gas pedal covers and full assembly gas pedals that install directly into like C10s, muscle cars, late model stuff. And they have varying rubber depending on that model year's OE style. This is such a cool way to add a subtle hint of class to your vehicle. It upgrades the factory stuff without overdoing it. I mean, some people like flashy and bold, and that's one way to do it. The other way is to have this really subdued look that just performs well in your car. It's a simple upgrade. You can do it yourself. It, I can't say enough good stuff about it. I know it's me saying it, but this is my favorite pedal that we've ever had at Low Car. Uh, go online at lowcar.com, check it out, see that we have your application. If not, give us a call and we'll see if we're working on it. And so here we have a 57 through 60 model F100, nicknamed the Fridge. Welcome back to the Low Car Car Show, brought to you by Appalachian Backroads. I'm here with Jason and his 1958 F100 truck that he drove all the way from California here. He didn't trailer it, you actually drove this thing, huh? Yes, sir. Now tell me about this truck. I see that it's an original three-speed on the column. You got the inline six straight original? Yeah, 223 straight six, not original to the truck. About three weeks ago, the original engine decided to crack ahead, so I luckily found this used engine and stuck it in here so I could wow. make the trip. So you still have the original engine though, yes, which is really Yes, the original cool. engine sitting on the garage floor because I didn't have time to do anything with it. <laughs> so I bought the truck. It looks like kind of like it does now. The paint was done. And then old trucks need something on the side, so we have a little family car lot in Oklahoma, I use the car business, and that's where we designed the logo for it. Make and, it look uh, old. Oh, right there. And yeah, just, just because it needs something more, got it back at the stock ride height with le new leaf springs. Tires are relatively new because I didn't want to try to make the trip on 15-year-old tires. So what on this is not stock? Uh, the air conditioning, the seat's a newer seat. So how just, fast were you able to go on the so highway coming 60, out here? Uh, 65 mile an hour is my, what my cruise speed is. It turns about 2,600 RPM, which the engine's pretty happy at. So there's what no point in pushing it. What kind of fuel economy did you get? The lowest was about 14 and a half, but I got a high of 19 in New Mexico. Man, I'm telling Downhill you. Downhill with the tailwind. You know, to, to hear you <laughs> drove this thing from California, and if anyone has done that drive, they know how hard it is in a newer vehicle. I'm here with Larry with this beautiful 65 Ford truck, full restoration, and there's a very cool story behind this. Well, the truck was originally purchased by my best friend, uh -huh. uh, and he kept it his whole life uh, as his daily driver, and eventually it ended up being in a barn, and uh, a number of years ago he passed away, and his wife decided to sell it, and I thought, I need to have that truck. It's been a part of my life. That started this whole ball rolling, and three years later we had a restored truck. And you actually drove this truck when you were 18 years old. I did. Many that times cool. over the decades uh, it was not uncommon. I needed a truck and I used this truck, yeah. Now you decided to do a full restoration on this truck, not changing anything from the way it was born. Yes, that's right. Now tell me about the spark plug wire. I noticed one boot is off by color. Why would they do that? In the production process, uh, when they were putting the engine together, uh, they had two spark plug wires that were the same length. Right. So to avoid confusion, they didn't get assembled on the wrong side of the engine bank. They made one color, with, one with an orange color boot, and that one goes on the driver's side. Yeah. <laughs> Takes all the confusion out yes, of it. You know? Yes, now, it does. Yes, it does. Who did the actual restoration on the truck? Uh, it was done by my friend. He has overdrive rides in Hanover, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. He was new in business. This was his first restore, and he did a wonderful job. The Grand National F100 Show was founded on the 53 to 56 F100 truck, nicknamed the Fat Fender Truck. We'll be right back with more of the Low Car Car Show, brought to you by Appalachian Backroads. So here we have the 73 to 79 model. These are nicknamed the Dents, and that's due to this line that's dented into the side of the truck that goes all the way down. Welcome back to the Low Car Car Show, brought to you by Appalachian Backroads. 
Here we have a one-off Ranger. We're at the Grand National F100 show, and this truck is well worthy of being protected by your showcase, correct? Oh, it's definitely showcase worthy. I mean, this is one of one of none, and this is what we protect and preserve, the finest vehicles in the world. I mean, look at all the dust on top of this, yeah. and that, that thing's spotless. Yeah, even in an environment like this, where you would yep. not think there's dust in the air, it's there, and this thing is, like you said, spotless and beautiful, and it fits. Yeah, well, people tell us, hey, I keep my stuff in a climate-controlled environment. I go, I live in one. It's the house. I still got a dust in. <laughs> yes. So this solves that problem. Perfect condition when you take it out. And humidity. Hot air, cold air, humid air, pressurize it, leaks through the zippers. So we never let opposite air masses meet. That's what people don't understand. Humidity doesn't condense. If it doesn't condense, you get no mold, mildew, rust, or corrosion. That's why these cars come out six days, six weeks, six months, years in perfect shape when you roll them out. Looking the way they did when you rolled them in. That's and it. That's huge, you know, because everybody's garage gets really dusty. No matter how clean you are, they get dusty just sitting there. Even if you're not working in the garage, and that's it gets what dusty. I tell people about their house. Now, let's say this truck didn't fit. Would you guys be able to make a taller one, a longer one? Well, we do offer, this is our standard height. Mm -hmm. So you got 70 inches of drive in, 78 on the outside. And then we make a tall version, stock sizes, 18 and 20 footers and they're 82 inch drive-in, so that's a foot more drive-in. And then we make customs all the time. We yeah. make customs for campers, RVs, buses, boats, it doesn't matter. I'm here with Greg, and he has his father's truck that he purchased back in 1968, it would be, right? Yes. This is a 66 model? 1966, yes. And he actually remembers being five years old, going to the lot and checking out this truck with his father. Tell me about the truck, Greg. All right, this is, a, like I said, it's a 1966. The restoration took eight to nine months, and there was a local guy in my hometown named uh, Tommy Heller. He did all the body work. We went back, we added uh, disc brakes and, uh, and interior. That's two basic things that's, uh, that we changed on the truck. We added air conditioning to the truck. Right. It didn't come with air conditioning. With the headliner is all custom and the uh, door panels. Now has dad seen it done? Yes, uh -huh. yeah, when I first got it back, I, I unveiled it to him and yeah. he got to see it. And he He's gonna come up here and check it out at the show. He was really excited. Actually, he's standing right there. He oh just man, up. that yeah. is awesome. He just that has awesome. got here, so. And what year did you get this? When did he give it to you? When I was 45, my 45. 45th birthday, he gave it to me and said I could do what I wanted to with it. <laughs> That's awesome. We well, did the right thing to it, absolutely. Making it a full restoration and not changing it too much from what Dad bought yeah. really is special. It took a few years. We drove it like it was and uh, decided to, to uh, make it new again. So. Well, you did a good job, and now you get to enjoy it. Thank yes. you so much, Greg, Thank you. for bringing it out and us checking it out. Thank you. Talk about one of one. This thing, I didn't even realize they did not make an enclosed Ranger. Sean built this out of a regular Ranger truck. Everything on this truck is completely custom. Tell us about it, Sean. We took a long bed 69 Ford pickup mm -hmm. and a 72 uh, Ford van, cut the top off of it, set it up on there. Uh, once we got it up there, we realized it was too long and too wide, so we had to narrow and cut down everything on the top. We built the windows off the side or off of the uh, little Bronco 2 design. Yep. Just enlarged to fit the full size Bronco. Uh, this looks so the long, factory. The long bed, we cut the bed down and attached it to the cab uh, to where this is the same wheelbase as the full size Bronco they made in 78. What? Cut the inside of the fenders out and raised everything up in the wheel tub so that we could lower it down. It's got 20s on the front. 22s on the back. The top of the fan shroud is designed off the actual original radiator that yeah. came out of the truck. We just enlarged it to fit the full Oh, wow. The and interior is gorgeous. Thank you. Speedway seat covers did all the interior. The front seat was the original bench out of the truck. And this one's a cut down version for the back. What kind of leather you got on there? Uh, this one, it's called Bear. It's a distressed brown leather. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back with more of the Low Car Car Show.
I'm here with Joe Carpenter, and he is the promoter of the Grand National F100 Show, and this is the fifth annual. I love coming here, seeing the growth from years past, and to hear the stories of the people driving as far as Montana, California, Pennsylvania, to come here. One dude actually drove his 58 straight, three on the tree, in line six, all the way here, by himself. Incredible, what stories you have here. Now, I know a lot of people out there ask, what do we expect to experience when you come to a show? Well, the first thing they're going to experience is friendly people. Mm -hmm. Beautiful atmosphere, clean air, nice facilities, uh, restaurants, hotels, the LeConte Center where the show's at, second to none. Just open your eyes, experience what's in front of you, come to the show, you'll see the entrance signs, park where you should, it's really easy, no hassle. Maybe if you want to come your first time, come as a spectator. Get a feel for the show, see what it's about. Then if you want to bring your vehicle the next following year, then do so. But like you said, there's a lot of people, friendly people, a lot of inspiration, a lot of good ideas. If you want to build something, you want ideas, you come here. And everybody out there is willing to share their ideas with you and how they did their builds. Instead of trying to keep it a secret so that you're not competing with them. You know, that camaraderie really means a lot. I come and see people at this show once a year, and I know them better than my neighbor. And a lot of vendors here. The swap meet was huge this year. Th this is the largest classic Ford truck swap meet in existence, period. This huge convention center is full of all of the most popular vendors for classic Ford trucks. You can literally find everything you need to build your truck from scratch to finish right here at the Grand National F100 show. Now, Jerry, you drove all the way from Sacramento, California to come to this show. Yes, I did. That is dedication right there. This is a beautiful truck. I love the bed. You can see all the mechanics. You did a very good job. It was a Bridgeport mill. Um, I've been machining since 81, 82, right in there. Um, and I always wondered what would one look like on four wheels. This is the Audi Nardo Gray. Uh, but I, it's the one I chose for the black, you know, makes it look good. You did a great job on the choice of the color. That is beautiful. And the frame, now you modified the frame heavily using the same rails, yes. but heavily modified. Heavily. What I love the best about the frame is the way you plumb the electricals, the power and ground wires going through the frame, nicely done, protected. It's a small block 351 Windsor motor. It's a smetting build, uh, stroke to a 427. Wow, 427. It's gotta have a lot of compression. How much horsepower are you putting down? About 600. Wow. I like the two-tone on the hood. Yeah. That's a nice touch. Yeah, that was my painter's touch. Because it's got all the power, looks like a pro street truck. Yeah. I love the fact that the rear bed is, is on air as it's well as the air. suspension. Yes. You got the suspension on switches, but the two valves you got back there really yes. is nice touch. Right. The, the team, the mechanics behind it really is cool to me. This is very nice. Thank you so much for driving all the way out from Sacramento, California, and coming to the show for everyone to say at your truck. Thomas, the Bronco's becoming more popular today, the four-door being huge custom. You said this is a body that you can get straight from Dennis Carpenter, right? Yes, it's very, very, very much coming soon from Carpenter. It's not released just yet, yeah. but every piece of this, I mean, fully assembled just like it is. So. Wow, that is absolutely yep. cool. And you do all the chassis work. We do all the chassis work and the powertrain. So the chassis is, it's a two by four, three sixteenths mandrel frame, mm -hmm. and it's coilovers all the way around. Uh, four link rear, five link front with the track bar. Sway bars front and rear. Willwood disc brakes. Yep. Nine inch front, nine inch rear. You got reservoirs, Fox yep. shocks, yep. Fox. high end yep. stuff. All stainless steel exhaust. Yep. And the Coyote engine in this yes. thing really, yep. really stands out. So, it's a nice tight yep. fit. Looks so good in there. So you got the Gen 3 Coyote with a 10 speed automatic wow. with electronically shifted transfer. Direct case. injection. Yep. So you're using a Ford computer to run this. Yes. Ford computer for the engine and the transmission. Yep. And it's the automatic transmission on yeah, this. Yeah, 10 speed. 10 speed. Yep. How long does it take to build something like this from beginning to end? Like complete or yeah. just, just the chassis portion? Just the chassis portion for you guys. Yeah, so you're talking about about six, about six to eight weeks for this build from wow. us. And you provide the engine, you, you give it to them just like this rolling right. chassis, yep. I take it like this and finish it. Right, so you'd like purchase the body from Dennis Carpenter, yep, yep. right? You get the powertrain and chassis from us and then you put your body on.
What an awesome show. This is my third year. It doubles in size every year. I want to thank you, Mr. Ford, for making this show come to life 30 years ago with the help of your sponsor, Dennis Carpenter. He was a huge part of the success of this show, right? Very much so. And Joe Carpenter took it over six years ago and grew it to what you see today. This is definitely a show you guys want to put on your roster and come check out with the family. You won't see the level of F100s anywhere in the country like you see here at the Lacan Center. For me, that's a wrap. Join us next week as we head back to Tennessee for the Pontiacs and Pigeon Forge Annual Car Show.